Hi everyone! Today on my bench I have this Tektronix oscilloscope for repair. The model is TDS7104, 4 channels, up to 1 GHz, 10 GB samples per second. A bit old-fashioned and bulky, but quite capable and affordable machine. I already repaired it a few months ago, which I did not record, but it failed again, and I think I know what this is. Let's have a look. So, I bought this machine a few months ago in a non-working state. The operating system booted up, but the Tektronix software never loaded, but got stuck like this. I did not uh, record that repair, because it was a simple matter of replacing a couple of uh, lithium batteries and a slightly tricky part, which was uh, restoring configuration on the Tektronix board in this machine through a serial port, so it could boot up again. The batteries should last for many years, if not decades, but here we are, a few months later, it failed again. Here we are inside, let's take a closer look. Here on top we have more or less standard computer motherboard by Intel. Quite old, with Pentium 3 or Celeron processor, and half a gig of RAM maximum, and it is running uh, Windows uh, 2000 operating system, I believe, or something like that. Below we have custom Tektronix board, with its own processor and RAM, so-called PowerPC, running VX Works operating system. Below we have power supply, and uh, below that, Tektronix acquisition board. Here is this uh, Intel board, with its own battery, which I replaced a few months ago, and there is no problem with this one, still shows 3 volts. This whole side is a panel of six fans. Here we have a floppy drive uh, on the front, hard drive and DVD drive with access from the back. And this is the acquisition board on the bottom, with four channel front end, fast ADCs and stuff, memory, and clock and triggering here. And here is the back of the unit, just for completeness. These are all connectors from motherboard, VGA port, printer port, serial, uh, Ethernet, mouse, keyboard, USB, sound, DVD drive, hard drive, GPIB port from the Tektronix board, and VGA port from the Tektronix board. So there are two VGA connectors for the operating system and for the scope screen. And here is the problem. This PowerPC board has one more battery, which is on top of a Dallas static RAM chip, located somewhere over here, under this top board, so we don't see it right now. And that battery must have died again. At some point, this board should access uh, the same hard drive to boot VxWorks operating system, but because configuration is lost, it cannot, and goes in a cycle here, according to these uh, status LEDs, and the Tektronix software cannot talk to this board and gets stuck with that splash screen we have seen before. So, the Intel board is removed, and now we can take a look at the PowerPC board. And here is this uh, static RAM chip with battery on top of it. This is a removable module called Power Cap. And I have seen a lot of discussions on the EV blog forum about this. Many people found that the chip takes a lot more current from the battery than it should. Let's say 100 times more. So the battery dies perhaps in a few weeks instead of decades. So, I believe this happened here as well. Let's see if we can confirm this. And here is this power cap, removed from the static RAM chip. 
I did not buy a new one. I just uh, replaced this coin cell with a brand new one by a good brand like Energizer or Duracell. I cannot remember right now. And I soldered very carefully and quickly and I have done such things many times before. So I don't think it was my fault. Not impossible, but very unlikely. Let's check the cell. 0.4 volts. Yes, it is dead. Let's test. I set the lab supply to 3 volts and limited the current to 1 milliamp just in case. But we really need to measure much lower than that, about a microamp, let's say, or lower. I couldn't find in the datasheet of this thing what current should we expect. They only specify data retention time of more than 10 years. So looking at that tiny coin cell, I would guess less than a microamp, perhaps hundreds of nanoamps or something like that, I'm not entirely sure. So I'm passing the positive side through this fluke multimeter set to microamps. So resolution should be in tens of nanoamps and accuracy of a quarter of percent, I suppose. So we should be good measuring that low. And just to make sure, this should be negative and this positive, about 3 volts. Yes. And if I short the probes, we should see about 1 milliamp limit. And we measure about uh, 1.28, which is okay. This thing is not very accurate at very low current limit. So, let's check. The chip is marked. This is negative and this is positive. Oh, wow! Look at this, about a milliamp or thousand microamps. This is way too much. It drops a bit, let's see if it settles. Still around 900. This is way too much. Let's see if we drop the voltage a bit. Uh, 2.5, let's say. Slightly discharged battery. Let's see. About 800 microamps. This is way too much. The chips are available, here they are on Mauser, about $48 a piece, not cheap at all. But I found this replacement design on the EV blog forum based on FRAM chip. And this chip does not need any battery at all and can retain data for 150 years according to the datasheet. I am not sure how they measured that, but it looks quite good. And here they are on Mauser, $21 a piece. And I also found this shared PCB design on PCB Way, board version 2. As I understand, it is slightly different from this design on the EV blog forum. This 5 pin package is a 3.6 volt regulator. And uh, I believe on that version 2, board. It was replaced by a 3-pin package, just to make it slightly easier to solder. Everything else, as I understand, is the same. So, the minimum order on PCB way is 5 boards and should be slightly more than $20 delivered, plus this chip, plus some other components. Overall, should be slightly more expensive than uh, just a replacement chip. But I really like this idea. Let's go for it. 
here is my order from PCB Way, five boards and the FRAM chip from Mauser and 3.6 volt regulators. Let's build this thing. Look at this. Quantity 5, but I got 10 boards for some reason. The chip is gone and the replacement is built. I used low melt solder and this wide tip to heat up one side, then lifted it up carefully, then heated up the other side, lifted that one up, and that worked just fine. And this is the bottom of the chip. They use some sort of controller and the static RAM chip. I cleaned the pads, so we are ready to solder the replacement. Alright, the replacement is soldered, and I hope the scope will turn on and boot up as before. I did not try that yet, for that I need to put back the computer motherboard on top of this. But this PowerPC board is not going to boot up until we restore configuration in this chip. And that is done through this serial port. People traced a pinout from this serial interface chip. And I built this cable before. TDS7000. This side is plugged in here. On this side only three wires are used ground, transmit and receive. This is a null modem adapter and the rest is just a USB to serial adapter. I bought uh, this part on eBay a long time ago but it has a um, 5 volt interface here but uh, we need proper plus minus 12 volt or so serial interface so I added this thing myself at some point. So I connected the thing to a laptop and I'm using serial terminal in Linux and here we have VxWorks boot prompt. So we need to type C for configuration and enter and then uh, type in a few settings. So the VxWorks operating system booted up and the Tektronix software started just fine. Now we need to make sure the scope boots up after power off. After turning the scope off and on again, it started just fine. So it's fixed and we'll never need battery again. How cool is that? Thanks for watching. Bye.